guys, welcome. Uh, well, this is our first time they're ever trying to be live on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, I'm here with Rejoice, and we are in our little cave. This is where like isolated from the whole world. Nobody knows we're here. <laughs> Corona knows we're here. <laughs> Corona doesn't know we're here. That's the whole point of hiding out in this cave. I went out today. I went to the supermarket. <laughs> you terrible person. What's wrong with you? You need food? <laughs> I went to buy food for the neighbor. I see. Okay, yes. So, yeah, she's uh, on a wheelchair, isn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're doing our good deeds for the day. Anyway, uh, all I wanted to do is just give my two cents and Rejoice's two cents about this whole pandemic. <gasps> First of all, you know, any kind of pandemic, I think, goes through two major cycles. One is that it starts off where it's kind of denial, where we... We minimize it, no big deal, it'll go away. And then and eventually it starts, like reality starts to set in and so we start to take action. And then eventually some people start to like panic and then they start forecasting crazy scenarios. And those crazy scenarios start to look realistic because of course we're going on an exponent, exponential curve. So of course you could project that up and you're going to get some kind of insane situation. At some point, those crazy predictions are going to be wrong. And I see the same thing happening in the stock market oftentimes. When the stock market is going high, let's say the Dow Jones is at 30,000 and before it was at 20,000, and all of a sudden people predict, well, in about a year's time, it's going to be at 100,000 because it's just going on this crazy high trajectory. And Bitcoin, by the way, they do the same thing. You know, like Bitcoin all of a sudden goes on a race and starts climbing and climbing. And before you know it, somebody says, Bitcoin will be $1 million for Bitcoin. <laughs> Um, right. And then but then the same thing happens in the other direction when something collapses. So then all of a sudden the stock market goes down back in 2009, 2000, uh, when they were having a big financial crisis. Some people were saying the stock market's going to go down to a thousand, you know, when it was at whatever it was, 10,000 or something like that. And people then project the exponential de decline to the bottom. And they did the same thing, you know, with Bitcoin, for example. And so with the coronavirus or COVID-19, I think we're seeing the same thing where there are predictions of people saying that there's going to be 80 million people dead, 100 million people dead, a billion people dead, probably. Well, actually, 100 years ago, we had the Spanish flu and that 20 million people died from the Spanish flu. So assuming that we have about five times more people than we had on the planet as we did 100 years ago then that means that we, we would need to lose 100 million people would have to die from COVID-19 for this to be equivalent to the Spanish flu. And frankly, in my opinion, it's not getting there. I'm looking at the news sometimes, and it's like, in the U.S., we have just topped 200 people dead. Ooh. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> we are like going nonstop 24 hour news cycle because 200 people have died in America? Shit, that many people die every day because of car accidents or whatever. I mean, I realize this is a contagion, well, but it's gun, different. Gun shooting. Gun shooting. Yeah, we lose uh, 10,000 people per year due to uh, homicides by guns. It's a clever balance. It's a tough balance because on the one hand, we don't want to all just brush it off and say, okay, well, no big deal. This is, uh, you know, not, not a big deal at all. But on the other hand, we don't want to make it sound like this is an apocalypse that we're all going to die. <laughs> well, it looks like an apocalypse when the, the, the toilet tissues in the supermarket, they're all gone. And, and, and my mother-in-law was also like complaining the other day. There are no bananas in my supermarket. Bananas. bananas. Oh, my God. Pull my hair out. I used to have a lot of hair, but I pulled my hair out after I lost my the bananas. <laughs> after I lost my bananas. How about that? Bananas. Toilet tissue. I mean, like people, I think people just go to the supermarket because there is corona and buy like a bunch of toilet tissue, which is fine. Toilet tissues will not expire or go bad, but they buy bananas, apples and all this fruit and they take it home. And then one week later, they're all yonky and the banana has little tash and now they have to throw it away. Then they will run maybe again to the supermarket and buy them. 
I just don't think people should. It's nice to keep away from people. Like keep your face away from me and wash your hands, which is common sense. Be even before coronavirus, me, I am like I think I have become what do you call this? Germaphobe. Germaphobe. Every time if Francis touches my apple that is cut and whatever, I will wash it before eating it. It's so. Well, you should see where I put my fingers though. <laughs> don't <laughs> put your fingers i just think it's panic put you should finger. just keep yourself away from like protect yourself but not to exaggerate and think like it's a zombie apocalypse and go to the supermarket and buy actually things you don't need and you're not even gonna eat them then you they end up in the dumpster i think it's the best that's true yeah. there's a lot of things in the dumpster um oh looks like we're getting a comment on facebook Francis, the worst case scenario is 300 million people die, but that would mean every person was infected. But I thought the death rate was 3 or 4%. If you've got 8 billion people, she's saying that 300 million people would die. That's the absolute worst case scenario, assuming that the, the death rate stays around uh, 3%. But here's the, the thing. If everybody thinks like me and just like is all relaxed about it, then of course we're all going to go outside and play volleyball and get ourselves, and then we're really going to screw ourselves. So, but what about Africa? Oh, well, um, I think even, I can't speak for all Africa, but my brother, for example. You can speak for all Africa. You're black. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, I have And you're friends. African too. Yeah, I have friends. You're not that. like those white South Africans. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, come on. I have friends in Nigeria, Cameroon, Tanzania. I think they are all aware of this coronavirus and uh, they are being more careful than the usual carefulness of how we used to live. Like my brother, he doesn't go out anymore and he doesn't shake hands, he doesn't go to the gym. And I have my friend in Tanzania who has already gone out and bought her face mask, her sanitizer. And so people are being careful. I think if they keep being this careful, maybe we might avoid scandals, scandalous <laughs> spreading. First of all, say hi to Doug Shelby. Thank you. Uh, hi, to, hi there. And Paul Gordon, you said, you. I'm pretty sure you can't say that, Francis. I'm not sure what I can't say. Uh, Probably some politically incorrect thing about her being black and <laughs> representing all of Africa. Uh, I don't <laughs> that mind. might be my thing. But I, luckily, nobody's watching this except for you and me, Paul. Come on. That's it. Can I ask a question? What is it that you cannot say? You cannot say, I am black? I don't know. Paul needs to elaborate about uh, the what what you're not supposed to... You're politically incorrect to say that you're black. You can speak for all of Africa because you're a black African. Oh, Okay. Um, so like I can speak for all of America because I'm a white. kind of semi-white uh, dude, uh, yeah. you know. So therefore, it's like it's a fucking joke, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but of course we've lost all sense of humor in uh, in, the, America. in America, yes, especially about <laughs> black things. Yeah, <laughs> you people <feel> are nuts. <laughs> Africa could be really fucked in a big way if if this actually broke out because yeah, they're, they, they love to shake hands. Oh and... yeah. The, the good thing is it started in China and before it arrived in Africa, we have already heard about it and we watched the news and we know that it's from shaking the hands or oh, the eye touching or the nose or the mouth. So they already know before it sneak into Africa. So people are being a little careful and it came there later. It came here first before to Italy. Then now it is over there, but we already know how it get uh, transmitted. So I really think they might avoid catastrophic if they keep being careful. By the way, and here's some financial advice, and nobody's going to listen to this, but anyway, and I'm not a accountant, so don't go sue me or whatever. But I do think now is a wonderful time to buy stocks and Bitcoin, by the way, because mm. both of them got hammered recently, and it's a fantastic you know, there's the old saying, buy when there's blood in the streets. Well, there's no blood in the streets, but there's a virus in the street. And this would be a great time to invest in stock market if you want my, I did, I said the same thing in 2009 when everybody was like financial crisis. And that's what I was talking about before is that people then project the decline in such a radical way that they assume that, you know, we're going to have hundreds of millions of people dead, which is, I think, not going to happen. 
And we're going to look back at this and say like, oh God, well, in some ways we're, it's good that we overreact because then we therefore make sure that we shut down the virus. Oh, uh, the prophet TV Joshua, <laughs> I'm not a Christian or a Muslim or any religion anywhere. I'm a pure atheist. So prophet, by the <laughs> way, for those who don't know, he's a Nigerian mega star for it's, it's, um, Christianity. It's called the Scott Synagogue Church of All Nations. He performs miracles. He prays to people and the evil spirits, they come out and they vomit all the poisons in their body. And on Sunday, March 15, he gave a sermon at his church and he said that on March 27, coronavirus would be defeated. And he also predicted that um, in one it, week, it will be raining in Wuhan and the rain will wash down coronavirus. And it did rain in Wuhan, actually. And now I am asking if it is pure coincidence or he's actually a prophet. So I'm going to wait until the 27th of March and then to see. I will even give him one more week. <laughs> I will add one week to his prediction and see. It it's is. the spring in China, so of course it's going to be raining probably somewhere all over well, the place. I'm just going to give him a benefit of doubt. <laughs> yes, you definitely need to do that. And some oh. of my friends, they also said they're in Africa, of course, in Cameroon, they said that the, the coronavirus was created by white people. <laughs> <laughs> and they created it, they released it into the world <laughs> to create panic and 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 to for some demonic reason somebody created the, the coronavirus they release it to spray fear and make the market economy market people like sell their stock and then that those country or a person who created that virus would buy the stocks the bitcoin and accumulate a lot then release the vaccine but People have already sold their stocks and their estate and whatever. He or they have made money and we have lost. But now we have the virus. That's what some of my friends believe. Of course, of course. <laughs> By the way, these conspiracy, There's. if you go to Wikipedia, you'll see a list, a long, impressive list of all the conspiracy theories regarding uh, COVID-19. It's quite amusing and, and, and funny. But I'm very happy that this thing started in China and not in Africa like Ebola. Because I remember when Ebola came out, it was just like, of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a pandemic created by white people to kill all Africans. And that was like the thing. And so now I can say this coronavirus, huh, how suspicious. Africa is one of the least, is the least, effective, least affected continent outside of Antarctica. So and we so, created so it. So yes, the <laughs> Africans created this to eliminate the colonizers and the neo-colonialists like China and the United States and all those developed countries. And it's all a conspiracy because Africans are somehow mysteriously immune to this thing. It's so much bullshit. But anyway, but I, I'm happy that at least uh, they are the least affected continent so far. But it, they could really, if it does spread fast and far, they could be uh, screwed because their sanitation is not nearly as good as... Yeah, and, the and hospitals. their hospitals are not nearly as good as the ones in the high-income countries. So that could screw them up in a royal way. But fortunately, so far, Did so you... good. Any other thoughts? Do you think you're going to die? Um, Who? You. Me? Oh, boy. No, I don't. I'm not looking forward to dying until I'm maybe 90. 90? Then, you, yeah. then you're looking forward to dying? Okay, so 3% of 8 billion is 240 million. So that prediction of 300 million people dying, yes, it would be, assuming a 3% or 3 to 4% death ratio. You're absolutely right. That is the worst case scenario. 300 million people dying. Is that that bad, though? Come on. 3-4% yeah, well, of the population of the planet? People will make you know, more babies. We'll just make more babies. We got... You know, yeah, Africans to do that for us. Mm, when are we going to produce a bunch of babies? No. You got to have produce at least seven. Come on. <laughs> keep dreaming about sure, it. Sure. Yeah, we're going to keep dreaming uh... about it. <laughs> 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 All right. Enough oversharing. And that concludes this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel, technology, and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we talked about, or if you'd like to comment on the show, or if you'd like to ask me a question, and go to wanderlearn.com and click on this episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember FTAPON. That's my first initial and my last name. FTAPON is the username I use on all social media. You can also get to my website by going to ftapon.com. And here's one last reason to remember FTAPON. 
If you like what I do and would like to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash ftapon. That's where you can pick up some remarkable rewards for as little as $2 a month. And now for five quick favors. Number one, subscribe to the Wander Learn podcast. Two, download it. Three, share it. Four, review it somewhere. And five, sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. Our theme music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is Francis Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn.